What's going on guys? Thanks so much for clicking on this video. Now before we begin, I want to make sure that you know when these videos come out. So make sure you hit the notification, that little bell on the bottom. Click that so you know when these types of videos come out. Also hit subscribe so you can get new videos each and every week. Also follow me on Instagram and on Twitter if those are your platforms. All right. Now let's go to the video. All right, what's going on guys? Phil DeRue back again with another video. Today I'm gonna be going over how to improve your kicking power. Now, with kicking in general, whether it be for MMA or striking sports, there's multiple different types of kicking styles, right? There's Muay Thai, there's Karate, there's Taekwondo. So I'm gonna give you some details on how you can actually improve upon whatever style you have, improve upon that kicking power with that style. We're gonna be utilizing exercises and we're also gonna be utilizing movement quality and overall mobility and stability exercises and movements to enhance your ability to produce power with those styles of kicks. All right, so follow me, let's make this happen. All right guys, so first, before we get into the exercises, we always have to go over the focus points. So for the focus points, remember, we wanna make sure that we're drilling the technique. We're drilling the form, we're getting in our sparring rounds, you're getting in some drilling with your sparring partners so that you can actually have the ability from a skills perspective to throw the kicks with high power. All right, then from there, we gotta make sure that we're going over those specific focus points. What type of kicker are you? Are you a Muay Thai kicker, primarily working on the hips, obliques, and low back? Are you a karate style kicker, right? Where we're gonna be primarily working on the glutes, the hips, and just the muscles of the core in general. And then in Taekwondo, that's more of a dynamic style kicker. So you're gonna be working on the core, the hips, and also the lower extremities, all right? When you're talking about power, right? Increasing the overall amount of strength is going to obviously go into or potentiate into power. So when you look at it from a physics standpoint, force, which is strength, how much force you can put into an object, equals mass, how much weight you're lifting, the intensity, times acceleration, how fast you can actually lift that maximum weight. All right. When you go from there, you take what you've gained from that force, you put it into the, the uh, equation of power, you want to multiply that with velocity. So you have to be able to move weight very fast, dynamically. So that's how we're going to increase power. We have to first get strong, then we can increase the power. All right. You also want to make sure that you're working on overall mobility, right? And stability in the hips, in the low back, in the muscles needed to produce that power, right? So you're going to work on passive and active stretching. And then also you're gonna be utilizing reciprocal inhibition. So basically, like we talked about in my last video, where we're gonna be utilizing the antagonistic muscle to turn on and contract so we can stretch the opposing muscle. This is gonna help with gaining optimal range of motion so that you could produce the force and the overall power in your kicks. All right, let's go over some exercises so you can increase your power output. All right, so first we're gonna go over all three specific styles of kicking. First, we're going to do Muay Thai. Now, Muay Thai, you have a rotational component, an anti-rotational component, and then a flexion component. So, we're going to use these exercises to enhance those qualities. We're going to use a cable lift, right? You're working the muscles of the transverse abdominals, the obliques, the serratus anterior, also working on the TFL or tensor fascia lata to actually whip. When you're talking about a Muay Thai kick, it's similar to a whip fashion. So we want to make sure that we're increasing the muscles there to produce that whip. Okay. You're also going to be doing a split stance payoff press. So we're going to get in that. We're going to try to increase your force production from each side, eliminating that bilateral deficit, and then also making sure we're getting an anti-rotation component so that we can increase the strength in those obliques in the uh, transverse abdominals. All right. Then lastly, we're going to be going on a hanging leg raise because I want to work that flexion component. You also want to work on the muscles of the lower abs and the hip flexors in general. So for these, we're going to be working on higher amounts of volume. So I like to do around three to four sets, right, of around eight to even 15 reps each. All right. Let's get into it. Okay, so for the first exercise for your Muay Thai kicking power, we're gonna be working on a cable lift. So you're gonna take a rope, tie it down to the, either a cable machine, or you can even use a band. But for right now, we're gonna use the cable, all right? Make sure your feet are about shoulder width apart, toes pointed forward. You're gonna pull that 
uh, cable towards your chest and then press up, rotating the shoulder. You're gonna come down, same thing, rotate. Make sure when you do these, they're explosive. If you do them right, you'll feel the muscles of the obliques fire up, all right? Like I said before, do about three to four sets of eight to 12 reps. On to the next one. Okay, so for the next exercise, we're gonna be doing that split stance payoff press with the cable. So you're gonna take your far side hand, grab the handle, lock the other hand down. You're gonna take, if you're going to the right side, right? If the right side is grabbing, the right leg is going to be up, the left leg is gonna be back. So you're gonna pull through here, get a good split stance, make sure you're nice and tight and straight up and down. Brace your core, press. Okay, again, three to four sets, around eight to 10 repetitions on each side. On to the next one. Okay, so for the last exercise, we're gonna be working that flexion of the anterior chain. So we're gonna take a bar, hang upside, grab the bar in a good position. Make sure your lats are locked down nice and tight. Your body is hollow. Drive the legs up and then back down. Drive up, back down. Try to eliminate the swinging. Drive up. Okay, three to four sets, 10 to even 15 repetitions. On to the next one. Okay, so next one we're gonna talk about is karate. Now with karate, you need to work on your lateral movement because they're in and out, the way they move, you know, it's a lot of in, change of direction, get back out, right? So lateral displacement, we're gonna be working on the muscles of the abductors. Also, we're gonna be working on rotation. So we wanna make sure that we're having the same type of movement quality in the transverse abdominals, in the obliques as well, and then flexion. We're also gonna be working strongly on flexion to actually bring the knee up so that they can produce that side kick, front kick, whatever the case may be, okay? So the exercises we're gonna be using is gonna be a Kazakh squat, right? This is going to help with that lateral displacement, pushing off laterally, all right? So you can increase your abduction muscles, muscle strength and then produce that power. But also we're gonna be doing a Russian twist. This is the same thing with the rotation. Any type of rotational exercise will work, but we're gonna use a Russian twist for it. The next one we're gonna be doing is an oblique crunch. Now this is primarily to help with getting that leg up enough to where you can strike hard and produce power with the mobility and the overall strength going in to that kick. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so now we're getting on to the karate style explosive power movements. We're gonna be working with, the first one is gonna be a Kazakh squat. So you can grab a dumbbell, a kettlebell, you can go double dumbbells, whatever you want or however you wanna load it. You can even use a barbell if you want. I'm gonna use a kettlebell, put it in a front rack position, Make sure your feet are nice and wide so you can start off in a good position. All right, I'm gonna grab up top, lock the lats down, make sure you brace the core. We're gonna go to the left side first. So I'm gonna sit down into the squat, stretch the leg, and then push lateral, boom, back up. Back down, push, boom. Make sure that you push the hip back. Pushing the lateral side of the glute. Now, you can turn this into more dynamic and actually step out and come down, or you can just stay stationary, all right? Three sets, around eight to 10 repetitions, or if you wanna go maximal strength with these, I would say around five, maybe six reps each side. Nothing more than that as far as an intensity goes, and uh, obviously nothing more on the volume side if the intensity is high. On to the next one. All right, so for the Russian twist, you can grab a med ball, kettlebell, dumbbell, anything with weight resistance, or you could do it on your own for body weight, doesn't matter. I'm gonna load it with the med ball. We're gonna take our feet, we're gonna bring them up, make sure they're off the floor. If you wanna regress it, you can put your feet on the floor, but we're gonna make sure that we're leaning back, we're not rounding forward at the shoulder, and you're gonna touch each side. Okay. 
Okay. Again, make sure you're maintaining a neutral spine. Try not to round. I started to see myself even round there. It's very easily to do. So if you see yourself doing that, make sure you get your posture back up. Work on firing up the obliques and you're also maintaining isometric contraction in your abdominals, your, right, your anterior abdominals. So for this three to four sets, again, you want to go about 10 to even 20 reps each side if you want to go high volume. This isn't really meant for high intensities, but volume is good. On to the next one. Okay, so for the oblique crunch, you can use a GHR machine or a back extension machine. I'm just gonna use the GHR. We're gonna lay sideways, all right, coming all the way down. Make sure your obliques are on, hand behind the head, drive up. All right, you do these right, you'll fire the obliques up very much, all right? Uh, for this one, you want to do about three to four sets again, somewhere around 10 to 15 repetitions, making sure that you do this primarily after the end of your training session if you decide to do so. On to the next one. Okay, so for the last style that we're going to be talking about is Taekwondo. Now, Taekwondo, highly mobility driven, right? So you need to be dynamic. You need to be able to produce force. You need to be able to produce power, but you also need to be able to be elusive. So. You want to make sure that we're working on extension type exercises of the posterior chain, working on the muscles of the low back, mid back, glutes and hamstrings. You also want to be working on that lateral displacement again so you can move side to side in multi-directional patterns. Also, you need to work on anti-rotation, rotation and in a dynamic fashion. All right. So how we're going to utilize that is we're going to utilize the exercises like good mornings for the posterior chain activation and extension. The sumo deadlift for that lateral displacement, pushing out or spreading the floor apart so you can increase the abduction muscles, increase of strength. And then from there, we're gonna be doing a variation of a payoff press with a dynamic walkout. So you're actually working, you're pushing lateral as you're maintaining that anti-rotation, increasing the strength in the obliques and the transverse abdominals. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the Taekwondo exercises for producing power in your kicks. We're gonna start off with a good morning. Now you can use a regular bar, you can use that Zercher style that I've seen or that I've shown in the past, but for today, I'm just gonna use a regular barbell on my back. All right, so you're gonna sit the barbell here, I'm gonna go underneath. All right, get it right on the traps. We're not going too low, we're not going too high on the neck. Right on the traps here, you're gonna get it up, back up obviously from the rack, All right? Get a good shoulder width stance. Lock your back down, brace your core, sit back, drive. Right. If you do it right, you'll feel a stretch in the hamstrings. Also, you want to finish with your hips, glutes, and low back. On to the next one. All right, so now we're going to go on to the sumo deadlift. Now, we're working primarily for this is the hips, the glutes, and you're also working that lateral displacement or lateral force production. So you're going to take your feet. You're going to get out wide, all right? On the bar, there's going to be rings, okay? So what you want to do is you want to set your feet up by those rings. You're going to slightly turn the toes out, creating hip torque. All right, squeeze your glutes and you're going to actively press the floor apart as you come down to reach for the bar. You're going to take a double overhand grip for now, making sure that your hand width is shoulder in the shoulder width position. Okay, so you come straight down, sit your butt back, spread the floor. As you're spreading the floor, you're going to grab at the edge of the knurling, grab at the edge of the knurling, pull your lats together, pull it towards your shins and then spread the floor, drive up, boom, brace down. Again, grab the ground, grab the bar tight, lock the lats in, spread the floor, go. Okay. Now, if you do this correctly, you'll feel your outer quads, your glutes, right, and your hips working as opposed to your lower back. If you feel it in your lower back, we need to get your spine a little bit more neutral. You need to open up your hips. 
this also goes in with hip mobility. So you're increasing your hip flexibility and mobility and also your force pro uh, production in your lateral movement. On to the next one. Okay, so now for the last one, we're gonna do the dynamic walkout payload press. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your hands, same thing, interlock it, all right? Get a good squared up stance, lock your lats down, all right? From there, you're gonna press out. You're gonna take three steps out. One, two, three, stay tight. Then three steps back in, maintaining your balance. Back again. Okay, main focus here is you wanna make sure that you're maintaining your balance. You're activating the glutes, you're activating the hips, your adductors, your abductors, and also your anti-rotation muscles. So anti-rotation meaning obliques, anti serratus, any muscle of the transverse abdominal. So this entire region here is gonna be nice and turned on when you do both sides, all right? This can be three sets. Remember, three out, three in is one rep. So do about five to six repetitions max on each side. Test it out, let me know how it goes. All right guys, so hopefully you get an understanding on how to actually improve your power production in your kicks, whatever style that you have. If you have any questions, you know what to do, hit the comments below, I'll be sure to answer them. Also again, make sure you hit that notification so you know when these videos come out. And give me some feedback, let me know if you like these types of videos, I'll be sure to do them again. Thanks again for watching, see you next time.